Hi, this is Quantum Amat. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will show you how you can get historical um, bars from Binance API in Python. And if you like my content, please like this video and subscribe. This will help me to make more content for you. So, um, uh, first of all, in Python, there is actually library, specific library you can use to work with Binance API. But I decided to go without it because uh, it's very easy to work to get historical data from uh, Binance. And also it, make, uh, it might help you to get better idea how to work with other APIs uh, you need. So first of all, let's look at um, libraries I will use in this example. So I'm using requests to send requests to a Binance API, JSON to parse these results because they will come as JSON objects for me, and um, pandas to work with data frames, date time to use with, to work with date and time, small plot just to plot something, and kubegrid I'm using to uh, nicely display data frames in uh, my notebook. So now let's get data from uh, Binance API. So here are official docs for Binance API. And uh, first thing we have to do, we need to know what API we should call. So um, we can scroll to you know, general information and see that this is a based endpoint is this one. Let's copy that. Let's compose like URL for that we will call. So this is the base for it. And now let's find our endpoint that we need to use. So we'll use market.data endpoint. I will use this client candlestick data. Let's go to it and just copy, you know, like this, uh, this uh, path and just add to our endpoint. So this is our URL. So now let's work with parameters um, that we have to pass to get the data. So as you can see, we have five different parameters. Let's start with the symbol. Let's use something I, you know, simple like Ethereum USDT for now. Uh, also here we have interval. Interval will use like one hour as our interval. And um, so start time and end, start time and add time is a bit more complicated. The issue is that it actually requires us to send uh, like numbers of milliseconds in unit, Unix format. So basically how much milliseconds passed from you know first of January 1970 and to do that we, we need to work a bit. So first of all um, let's create like a usual uh, date time. So date time and I will use um, let's say first of uh, January 2020 and now we need to transform it uh, to um, to, to, to Unix time frame. So I can do this following way. So we use uh, um, method uh, time um, stamp and this basically will output it, output us number of uh, seconds that passed from 1970. So we also have to multiply this by a thousand and this actually will give us number of milliseconds. Uh, so I also will do a few things. First of all I will um, transform it to int and after that I will transform that to string and that's it. So now we have our start and date and we will do the same with uh, and date and time. So I will just use a second of uh, first of um, February um, 2020. That's it. And now let's go to the limit and let's create like a variable for a limit parameter and um, it will um, be a thousand. So um, I think a thousand is maximum value we, we can have. So here we are trying to get, uh, you know, like uh, one month of data, one hour data, and it seems like we should be fine. So it's like 31 days multiplied by 24 hours a day, it will be around 700. So I think we should be fine. And I also use this as a string. A convenient way to uh, pass all your parameters uh, to an API is to create a dictionary from it. So uh, now I will create a dictionary, um, so request params and use curly brackets to create a dictionary. Now you just need to list all your parameters here. So symbol, com, colon and your value, the same with interval and the same with start time and end time. And the last one is limit. So let's look at our uh, our dictionary we created. Okay, we have to execute this one first to import the libraries. And now our our uh, parameters 
our dictionary with parameters is ready as you can see it works pretty good so start time and end time in the format they want like milliseconds from the 1970 so it um, seems to work fine only thing i think i have like in in usdt i have like a typo here in the symbol so now we have our parameters let's go and uh, call uh, api now so um, to call an api you can use from a request library you can use uh, method get and um, here you just need to pass your url and and parameters you just created pass them like that and you can just execute it to see a response we received like 200 response so it seems to be fine to get the actual data from uh, this response you can use um, text um, parameter and as you can see here we have our JSON uh, data but it's not super convenient for us so let's go and uh, parse this JSON object to something more convenient so you can use um, JSON uh, library and um, you have a uh, loads uh, method in this library and you just can drop your entire your data from it and it will parse it as a list of lists but it's also not super convenient for us so let's use um, let's use um, as a, a pandas um, data frame functions to convert it to a data frame so just uh, pd dot uh, data frame and just basically drop it and you see now we have a nice data frame so let's just assign it to a df um, df for now so let's look at it again Okay, it seems like we have results of uh, our requests in our DF um, data frame. So it seems to work, but it's uh, still a bit messy. As you can see, we have um, quite a lot of columns. We have no names for these columns. So let's fix that. If you look at um, documentation, you can see that we have like a, how many, like 12 different uh, columns here, but I think I need only our first six. And let's also add um, names uh, to to these uh, columns as well. So what I will do, I will um, use uh, iLock um, dev dot iLock uh, kind of function to subtract only first uh, six columns. And also, what I will do, I will just um, assign um, uh, names to all my columns. So we'll use um, as a list here. So just uh, date, time, open, uh, high, low, close, and volume. So that's it. Let's execute it to see if it works. So it seems it works a bit better now. We have uh, only columns uh, we need. Um, next issue is that uh, our um, date time is a very weird format we cannot understand what's going on with it so let's transform it to a, like a good format we can understand and actually we'll create just an index from it so this can help us to to understand better the data a bit better so what i will do here i will just i use list comprehension to create our um, our index i will use um, date uh, time um, from from uh, timestamp function here i will pass my x divided by 1000 and um, i will use this for all for all x in x um df sorry df dot daytime daytime so that's it let's see how it looks so as you can see now we have really nice uh, index uh, that is, is is in kind of in a good format we can understand now you know this data frame uh, much better so it seems to work but let's do this code a bit better so first of all let's create a function from it and this way it will be easier for you to call it multiple times so let's um, define a function um, let's say let, let's call it get uh, binance bars and um, we will pass like four parameters to that with um, simple interval um, start time and add time and um, we will uh, use always like limit a thousand so it uh, doesn't matter too much and in the end let's return uh, just df here 
and uh, now we need to replace um, our um, simple interval we'll delete this and um, I will replace here start time with the, that one so we'll pass my time as already a timestamp so um, at daytime I mean and let's replace this one here as well so I think we're um, almost good now but the only issue we have here so if uh, it will output us empty data frame for reason we'll have an error here so we'll uh, use like a, a, an if statement to fix that so if um, len of um, df index is equal to zero then I will just return none so that's it I think let's save it uh, okay we need to call here of course and let's um, edit here as well um, so it's, I think that's it so now let's try to call uh, this function so I will use a simple I will use the same Ethereum USDT um, one hour chart and I will use a DT date time uh, 21 and 1st of February 4 uh, for the end time February. let's try to execute it as you can see it seems to work now we have a function but still we have an issue uh, with this function it problem is that we have a limit of only a thousand bars and if you want to do a really good analysis or backtesting you know like uh, 1000 bars is not enough and if you want to get data for a big period uh, what you have to do is you kind of have to split your period into smaller periods call this function multiple times and after that join data together so this can be done in many ways but i will uh, show you now an example a simple simple example how you can do that so um let's create um, like a list function uh, list months and i will um create it following ways so we use a date um time function i will use um 2020 and first so basically i want to create like a list of all months in um in 2020 so and i will do this um for i in um range 1 to 13 and let's see how our months looks like and as you can see it seems like to work very good but also i have to add first of January 2021 to, to 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 finish with this so months and I will use a band we use the same uh, structure but 21 and the first one let's execute it and it seems to work so here you can see I have first of every month of 2020 and I have the first of January 2021 this is what I want to do so now let's um, go and call uh, basically this um, uh, this function for all these periods I can also do this with a list comprehension so I will create this DF list um, and um, let's just call this let's use this the same kind of call for that so I will use the same but here I will use just different dates so I will use months of iterator my and uh, next months uh, first first of the next months and um, and I will do this uh, for um, for I in range of 0 to land months minus 1 I think this 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 way it should work fine the only thing I think there is there might be a problem when you have like when you pass like a the same date as start and end date for different calls you might have intersection with one bar so what i will do i will just basically uh, subtract a second from one of my um one of my kind of uh, date dates so i can do this with dt um time uh, delta and i can use a zero one so first zero is is for dates second is for seconds so basically i will just subtract one uh, one second with this one so let's try to execute it we have an errors okay so months uh, so i have to add here 
So it's is good to see it takes some time, so it has it needs some time to be calculated. But we can look at it and it should be a list of uh, data frames. As you can see, we have multiple data frames inside the list. So to join it, you can use a uh, following command. Um, it, uh, it's from um, pandas, uh, pandas library. So just uh, pandas pd um, concat and just pass list of dates. Um, let's execute it. Now we have one uh, data frame and let's look at uh, its shape to see if it works. So now we have a, lead, a data frame with uh, with almost 8,000 uh, candlesticks and it seems to work um, pretty well. To check that our data is okay, let's do a few more like simple checks. So first one you can do is you can use um, Q grid library um, show um, grid function and just to display um, your um, your data frame in a really nice format. So here you can go through your uh, data frame. You can apply some filters, sort by different um, columns. So it's quite useful. Which is you can go to visually check that your data is is fine. And also you can upload um, your data just to see if um, there is no issues. So we'll, for example, we'll use like I will um, get like close. Let's. Um, Let's transform it to um, float, and after that, let's just plot it with my plot leap. And as you can see here, it seems like our data is uh, fine. So I think that's all for this video. As you can see, it's pretty simple to um, to work with the Binance API. You can get your data from there pretty easily for analysis. You don't need special libraries or something. You can use the pretty much the same like. A, uh, the same way to work with other APIs as well. So thank you for watching. See you.